Hey hey, what's up everyone? Fluffy Armchair Admiral here with another video about Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Before I begin today's video, I'd like to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already and to use that bell to make sure you won't miss out on any content from me. I would also like to encourage you to join my Discord server where you can interact with me and other Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts fans, share some of your crazy designs, suggest a cool scenario or just chill. You can find link in description down below this video. Welcome back in another episode of Naval Academy series where I'm going through all Naval Academy missions that are available in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought. I would also like to apologize a little bit for my voice uh, because, well, when I was recording this video I usually do it live while playing the game. The problem is that the day before I've been testing something in OBS and I muted my microphone. Uh, so. Today, microphone will sound slightly different because I'm recording it after recording the actual video, which is not an easy task. That's why some things that I'm doing on my screen might not fit what I'm actually, well, what I was actually doing while recording. But, well, anyway. So at this point, I selected another mission, which is Sink the Raiders. So the objective is to defend our transport ships from three dangerous cruisers. Three heavy cruisers are threatening two of our transports. These cruisers possess a mix of firepower, protection and speed that can make them practically uh, particularly dangerous against other cruisers. You can try to deal with them with a number of your own cruisers or a semi-dreadnought, which although not very maneuverable, its numerous big guns can undoubtedly deliver high uh, damage. You must sink the enemy cruisers and not let them sink any of our vital transport ships. So for this mission we were building battleship. Um, I didn't went through uh, heavy cruiser or light cruiser, so that's that's small spoiler. Uh, I took boost firepower. Uh, we should see that on the screen right about now. Uh, well, right about now. Uh, very soon, I, I was still talking. At this point, I was still talking through the mission specifications. Uh, so, enemy fleet uh, will be three heavy cruisers. I'm not going to tell you right now what kind of cruisers we are getting, but at this point, uh, well, there were many fears about what those heavy cruisers might have. Uh, so, obviously, uh, the big advantage of heavy cruiser against a battleship is higher maneuverability uh, even though the firepower is smaller they can outmaneuver my firepower which is basically main guns that will fire once every uh, once in a while uh, so that was uh, one of the first risks if i will shoot out all the ammunition into the water uh, without damaging those ships they will be able to outrun me outmaneuver me and eventually get to transport ships. Another risk is that even if I will catch up with those heavy cruisers, well, they might be equipped with some nasty surprises, like torpedoes, for example. And that was a big fear of mine, uh, because, well, fighting against three heavy cruisers that are actually equipped with torpedoes is not that easy task. Uh, so at this point, I've been uh, actually considering different options. And the options are boost firepower, which will boost my main guns. They will boost my um, uh, fire control systems, uh, add some some extra um, different propellants and, and things like that. Uh, obviously, uh, optimized maneuverability will boost my resistance, uh, will boost my um, engines and any other things that is related to uh, to speed and maneuverability. Um, finally, optimized survivability will definitely improve my ship's protection, like give me better armor, lighter armor, more armor, and eventually will make my ship much more resistant to firepower. I wasn't too much scared about sheer firepower of enemy guns, because, well, those are cruisers. What do you expect from them? Um, they will have probably like up to 10 inch guns, which is still dangerous. I'm not going to lie. 10 inch guns was more than enough to punch through my armor. Uh, but it doesn't give uh, a lot of damage output. I eventually went for boosted firepower. 
So our design will be called uh, Giulio Cesare. I, I, I really struggle to pronounce those Italian names, really. Uh, those are Julio Cesare or Giulio Cesare, whatever. Right. Uh, so I went through, well, pretty standard build. Uh, main tower, uh, well, main tower two, secondary tower two, two big funnels, and that's it. Yeah, the ship looks pretty, pretty normal. At least at that point. Okay, nice, good look. Uh, right, main guns. So for main guns, I went with the most accurate ones, which happens to be 12 inch. So let me give a second for them. There we go. Okay, and yes, that was the point where I decided, okay, let's take 12 inch guns. So I mounted a pair of these bad boys and realized that I went a little bit overweight. I wasn't too much concerned about it at that point. Uh, as you could see, just change of type of armor was more than enough to sort out my problem. But I decided to go with Barbet 3, Anti-Torque 2, uh, Reinforced Bulkheads 1, Anti-Flood 2, and Citadel 2. That put me again overweight. Uh, it still wasn't too much of a concern. Uh, auxiliary Engine 1, and Multiple Expansion Steam Engine, of course. Uh, so, the best modules I could get. I quickly checked if my engine efficiency is good enough. It happens to not, so I improved boilers as well. All that happened at the cost of speed, which I dropped down to 21 knots. Why is that? Well, I'm building early era uh, semi dreadnought. So, 21 knots was pretty much a light speed. At those times, nobody would expect wow, uh, like 15. 16,000 ton battleship going as fast as 21 knots? No way. That's that's pretty much 50 miles per uh, 50 miles per hour. Uh, that's pretty much like 50, 60 kilometers per hour if if you think about it. Uh, just remember that nautical mile is much longer than um, than standard mile that that you will see on the land. So nautical mile is actually much faster. It's I think 1.8 kilometers per hour. So yeah, pretty much 50 kilometers per hour was uh, well, well, nearly 50 kilometers per hour. That was the speed of our battleship. That's pretty fast for 16,000 tons of steel. Right, when it comes to a uh, fire control system, I was struggling with a choice, because my choices were very limited. Uh, I could go only with Coincidence 1, uh, which, which I didn't find too much trustworthy. Uh, so I was thinking, well, I was... Uh, is that... Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, I could go with Coincidence 3, However, I wasn't able to go with stereoscopic uh, rangefinder, and, and that was the big problem. Uh, I was really afraid that at range my ship will underperform, and basically that was the thing during the battle. You will see it for yourself though. Right. Uh, when it comes to secondaries, I went with 3 inch uh, casemate guns, and they were also supplemented with. 5 inch secondary guns. A grand total of 8 of those 5 inches were installed in 4 double turrets. Okay, that doesn't look good, isn't it? Yeah, so I had to turn those turrets around. There we go. There we go, that looks beautiful. So now that my ship was pretty much completed, I, I had to solve one more problem. And that is, uh, yeah, my ship went a little bit overweight, so I decided to reduce deck armor a little bit. And then I was struggling with decision for a short period of time. I, I took a bit uh, of armor off turret top and reduced secondaries down to 5 inch. 
<coughs> okay. And now, uh, now is the point where I was just mingling with settings to get the most optimal performance out of my setup. Uh, so definitely I reduced the offset by pushing the front turret a little bit more to the front. Or at least as far as it was um, appropriate. And pushing the rear turret uh, also towards the front. So the weight offset was reduced to the bare minimum. At this point it was pretty much uh, it. I was trying to take a little bit more ammunition or heavier ammunition, which you will see for yourself. Yeah, that's the point. Uh, unfortunately, every single attempt on on those put me a little bit overweight. Uh, as you probably noticed, at some point I I took white powder as my propellant. Why is that? Well, um. Corded is not exactly my favorite propellant. Oh, I also tested that torpedoes. I completely forgot about it. Right. Anyway, uh, Corded is is not one of my favorite propellants, um, mostly because it's highly explosive and and it usually explodes on on board of my ship. Sadly, uh, so I I didn't have too much luck using um, Corded myself. Uh, white powder, on the other hand, is pretty balanced propellant. Uh, it, it's like middle class, all in all, a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, so basically, it never let me down. Right, at this point, I was just taking screenshots for my thumbnail. And the battle should start very, very soon. There we go. Okay. So my strategy for this battle was pretty much the same as usual. I reduced the speed so that I can get the most optimal accuracy out of my guns. Which is not a big deal. Um, you just drop the speed down. And the strategy was simple. Go across uh, or go in between those heavy cruisers and my transport ships to become their main target. That's, that's the first thing that, that I wanted to achieve. The second goal was to drag them for long enough so that they won't catch up with my transport ships in case they eventually overcome my protection by torpedoing me and sinking my ship. Right, so when everything was set up, I increased the time compression and off we go. Uh, I first had to find the enemy uh, from the intel I got uh, at the start of the mission. I knew that enemy is to the north. And pretty much that's the point where I got under fire. Okay. Which means that enemies still haven't spotted my transport ships. Because they didn't came under fire themselves. Okay, and that's the point where I actually spotted the enemy ship. My front gun opened fire, but it was very ineffective. And I'm not going to lie, it, it won't be effective until I find out... Uh, what kind of ships I'm dealing with so that I can eventually reduce the range because at this range there was absolutely no chance I can score effective hits or at least that's what I thought at this point uh, so I turned to to get into parallel course with the enemy at the range of 5.3 kilometers which is pretty long range for this era uh, warship and then I scored my first hit, which was a great surprise to me. At 5.2 kilometers, it's really not easy to, to score a hit. Um, eventually, my ship decided to, to change the target to, to the last ship in the formation, which I had to manually uh, reselect, uh, because I really wanted enemy to... 
I really wanted enemy uh, to eventually sink and as this was the most damaged enemy in, in the formation well that was the perfect choice isn't it okay so I kept on firing kept on firing but enemy eventually started to pump out water and I couldn't score another hit which was pretty disappointing I'm not going to lie uh, if I could follow up with flooding hit this guy would definitely be dead so Peho will live for a few more minutes to tell the tale I guess okay at this point I started to be a little bit concerned about the volume of enemy fire however what you probably noticed is that well at least Peho doesn't have any sort of torpedoes which is very good it is equipped with quite sizable main guns though and that was a little bit of a concern I checked the other two ships and yes my intel was correct there were no torpedoes so at this point I decided okay let's charge at them I got the upper hand I got the armor I got the firepower all I need is accuracy and I can gain that accuracy by reducing the distance from the enemy because then my guns becomes really really dangerous so I kept shelling Peho uh, because that was my first goal sink this one because it's already damaged and the sooner I can sink one ship the less guns are actually firing at me which basically well uh, how do you call it uh, hits two birds with one stone I guess so I kept on firing obviously with my very ineffective fire and you can see how how poor accuracy is well poor it, it's pretty much not bad uh, most of my shots were landing very close apart from the moment when I was maneuvering then well uh, you can see for yourself my, my shots could land anywhere from being very close to enemy to going completely off okay a little bit a little bit shots back and forth from the enemy but eventually I managed to stabilize my course and I was still cutting the distance from the enemy so that was very good I was getting closer at pretty much parallel course but you could see that the uh, that the first ship in enemy formation was much much faster than me and at this point I was running at into some small danger which I basically uh, couldn't control uh, because of my poor maneuverability well as you can see enemy heavy cruisers are crossing in front of my ship which is putting me at a serious risk of well being outmaneuvered this is also the point where I got close enough to the enemy to reduce the time compression it went down to times three so the game will progress a little bit slower from now on right I scored a very devast well uh, a devastating hit on Peho and then I followed up with changing target to Embundance or Embundance uh, oh Embuscade uh, my, my apologies for, for mispronunciation and with the first shot I basically devastated half of enemy ship uh, the second shot that followed caused uh, two floodings and basically sunk her that was really fast encounter However, Peho decided that, well, it, it's a good idea to pump out the water. So she eventually managed to stay afloat, at least for a little bit longer, because very quickly I finished her off. So we are down to just one target, Marcelle. And Marcelle, well, had very interesting encounter with me. At this point, she could have disengaged was much faster than me uh, her engines were undamaged 
And if she would just charge towards those transport ships, I wouldn't be able to do anything about this. Just really. Whatever I would do at this point was pretty, pretty bad. I really got outmaneuvered. However, this is a serious mistake from, from enemy ship, though. Uh, she decided to keep on fighting. And that was a terrible decision. I, honestly, why would you do that? So, eventually, just a tip for the future, if you run into a situation like that, and your main goal is to sink transport ships, go for transport ships, ignore that sluggish battleship. Because as you can see, I can't hit for shit. <laughs> I literally can't hit the enemy. Uh, this was terrible decision on enemy part. Uh, because I had to really maneuver hard in order to bring my guns to bear. Which is also further reducing my accuracy. But as soon as I stabilized my course, and you will see that in a moment, I started to score hits. And you can guess it. Well, I'm shooting heavy cruiser. And I'm running a battleship. So, this can end only in one way. Yep, first hit, 148 damage, flooding hit, and engine got damaged. And that's not the first hit I'm, I'm gonna score. At this point, enemy is pretty much reduced to similar speed as me. Second hit, another engine down. And it's gonna go and it's only gonna get worse because I scored another flooding. So eventually, engine compartments will get flooded and further engines will get damaged. Pretty much similar what happened right now. So two out of three engines are down. The ship is heavily flooded, and it's still flooding. Steering is down, so right now it's a sitting duck. It's very easy target. It's pretty much us shutting, um, shooting a dummy ship. On top of that, well, enemy has only 8-inch guns on this vessel, so she really can't do much. Well, she can still punch through my armor because I'm at a very short distance from her, uh, but let's, let's be serious my ship is on 49% on health while enemy is well is in pretty bad shape their engines are down they they have to pump out the water from middle compartments where the engines are and I'm not sure if they are even able to do so because at some point if the flooding is too too heavy the ships won't uh, won't pump out the water so at this point all I have to do is to reduce the distance from the enemy to, to gain extra accuracy and hopefully finish her off really quick I scored another hit but it wasn't critical and began to reduce my distance from her and you can see how fast it is to actually kill the enemy Okay, I scored a critical hit with a fire, and that caused a chain reaction. Four flash fires in a row, and enemy got sunk. So that's pretty much the story of me defeating the raiders. It wasn't particularly hard mission. Uh, I was pretty much surprised by how smoothly it went. Uh, you could see for yourself that because enemy didn't hatch torpedoes, uh, I had very easy time dealing with three heavy cruisers. If they would have torpedoes, it would probably end similar to what I did in lots of guns series. Uh, you can search for, for that episode in, in that series. The series should pop up in top right corner right about now. Uh, I used to play that mission before. And I remember I played it before flash fires were a thing. So it was, it was much harder to actually sink the enemy. It was much harder to even hit the enemy back then, uh, which was another problem. And on top of that, uh, back then I had to deal with enemy torpedoes, if I remember correctly. And this mission was absolutely impossible to beat. Well, it wasn't impossible to beat because I could always beat it 
by running into, well, by going for secondary goal, or actually my primary goal, which is protecting my transport ships for long enough for the mission duration to go over the time limit, which was exactly what I did. Uh, back then, I, I basically tried to drag the battle for long enough so that enemy cruisers were too far away from transport ships to actually catch up with them and sink them before mission timer went out. It was pretty, pretty tough task. But I eventually managed to do it, even though my battleship back then uh, sadly didn't survive uh, until the end, because enemy was just too tough. I'm not going to lie, I couldn't hit the enemy. Uh, enemy was much faster than me, outmaneuvered me, overcame, uh, overcame me with the numbers, and on top of that, sunk me with torpedoes. I managed to dodge quite a few of them, but eventually one of them will hit, another one will hit, and then it will follow with another one. And as you could see, my torpedo protection was very, very limited. So sooner or later, those torpedoes would eventually hit me and sink me. Right, so I think that's, that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to get informed about my new content, hit that notification bell button and don't forget to share your comments down below. Also, don't forget to jump in on my Discord server where you can discuss this and other um, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts episodes. You can give your ideas for cool scenarios that I will start featuring again after New Year. And you can discuss, uh, you can take part in, in voting session about many different aspects of my channel, like future ideas or eventually future missions that will be featured in custom battle scenarios um, series. Have a great day and see you all later. Later. Out.